Coming up on LEX 18 News at 11. After nearly nine hours in this room and months of investigating, the NTSB has made their decision what caused the crash of 5190. It's another guilty verdict in a Bourbon County murder case. And crashing into the Kroger. With coverage you can count on, this is LEX 18 News at 11. Pilot error. That's what the NTSB says is the major reason Com Air Flight 5191 crashed, killing 49 people. There are other findings and reaction in tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us at 11. I'm Kevin Christopher. Nancy Cox has been covering the NTSB proceedings in Washington. We'll join her in a moment. But first, we have two breaking stories. The first involving an accident on Interstate 75. We're told it involved a tractor trailer and a car near the 102 mile marker and it's slowing traffic considerably. We have a crew headed to the scene and we'll bring you more details as they become available. Also, a Tennessee man has been killed in a plane crash in Pulaski County. LEX 18's Richard Devane has the details from Science Hill. Kevin, the Pulaski County Sheriff's Department, as you can see, is still on the scene. They've roped off this area, and that down plane is just behind that yellow tape, about 100 feet. The first call came into the Pulaski County Dispatch around 617, saying that a plane had gone down somewhere off Suba Road. The single-engine Beechcraft out of Tennessee went down nose first. It clipped trees in the process, breaking off the plane's left wing and part of the tail. The impact also crushed part of the fuselage. When emergency crews arrived at the location, the only person on board was dead. It was a 60-year-old man also out of Tennessee. An autopsy will determine if the victim's death was caused by impact or a pre-existing medical condition. And I thought, well, he'll, he's headed for emergency land and going to get over the trees and uh, get into that field down, right down here and land in the field. And no more than I thought that, uh, I heard wham wham. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Department says it will stay here to make sure that this area is safe for the NTSB crews when it gets here so that they can continue their investigation on the crash. As for the victim, he's been taken to Frankfurt for an autopsy to determine his exact cause of death. We're covering the news in Pulaski County from the LEX 18 mobile newsroom. Kevin, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Richard. We'll have more about that story coming up on LEX 18 News at sunrise. Now to the big story. The pilots' heads weren't in the game. That's what the NTSB has concluded was the main reason Com Air Flight 5191 crashed last August, killing 49 people. Nancy Cox begins our team coverage from Washington with more about why the board said the pilots didn't do their job. And that's what led to the disaster in tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 11. For 11 months, speculation swirled around the pilots, the airport, air traffic control. Now the NTSB has had its final say, and it was clear from the beginning of this marathon meeting where the blame would lie. Here's LEX 18's Chase Kane. After months of investigating and nearly nine hours in this room for the NTSB, it all came down to the fact that the pilots weren't paying attention, and that cost 49 people their lives. From the beginning, the board focused in on Jeffrey Clay and James Paul Hinkey, the two men in control of it all. These are good, decent men that were attempting to do the right thing. I really believe that. But for whatever reason, their, their head wasn't in the game. And that mental lapse later became the official cause of the deadly crash. All in favor signify by the use of the hand and aye. Aye. No opposition. The report has been adopted unanimously. But not until the NTSB ruled out airport construction, the air traffic controller, and incorrect runway charts as possible factors, instead pointing out the pilot's lack of attention with their chit-chat in the cockpit. Yes, there's human error, and yes, there's system error. But the, the human error far outweighed the system error in this case. We can't say that the system caused the accident. That mistake of taking off from the wrong runway stunned the board when they saw just how different the two runways look. And I scratch my head to understand after the thousands of takeoffs that these men have done over the hours that they have been flying, how they couldn't see the difference at the moment they were beginning as they lined up on the runway. The one mistake that proved so disastrous. 
Now the board hopes that the FAA will require pilots to double check their runway before they can take off and they hope that GPS-like devices will be installed in every plane, both to make sure that if a pilot does make a mistake in the future, that it doesn't cost anyone their life. But of course, the frustration is that all these recommendations are simply optional. We are covering the news in Washington, D.C. Now back to you. The NTSB credited the first responders and thanked the Lexington community. While this meeting had a bureaucratic look, it was clear the investigators were sensitive to the families, the people who have lost so much. I have been angered before. I'm happy today. This is a huge step. It's hard for Kathy Ryan to hear how human mistakes took the love of her life, her husband, Michael Ryan. At the same time, she's glad the truth is out. We now know where the focus is and should be. Unfortunately, um, the pilots just weren't paying attention. They weren't doing their job. The family of 26-year-old Thomas Fahey say they have no anger for the pilot, Jeff Clay, and co-pilot, James Polhinky. Still, it's very painful. And um, I would have liked to have thought those pilots thought of my son as their son being on the flight. While it may be a step in the right direction, families are not ready to say this hearing will bring closure. There's never going to be any closure um, emotionally. Um, there can be other closures that help emotionally, but um, I don't know yet because I've never done this before. So we'll just have to wait and see. I miss my son. I want him back. However, the families told me they do have a sense of relief. You could see hugs and smiles in the gallery where they were watching. Perhaps they've cleared another hurdle in this painful process. We're covering the news in Washington, D.C. Back to you. Well, here in Lexington, victims' families gathered at the downtown Hyatt to watch the NTSB meeting. Nearly 30 people watched on the big screen as details were discussed problems pinpointed and blame assigned. Some couldn't make it through the day-long ordeal, choosing to leave after a few hours. Others were still left with questions. Emotionally, it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to come here, sit, hear some information, you know, leave. But, you know, emotionally, I'm very drained right now. And Sadness and, and at the same time, just wishing that uh, so many of these little things just hadn't happened and that this, this tragedy just never happened. At this point, honestly, we don't care who's to blame. It, it, it's not made any difference. You too. Come here. Most people we spoke with said it was still hard to accept the fact two experienced pilots made so many mistakes. In a statement, Comair acknowledging the airline's culpability in the crash, airline president Don Bornhorst said, Comair's commitment and hopefully the commitment of all parties involved in this accident is to acknowledge responsibility and move forward to continue to improve safety. That's more than an obligation. It's also the way we can honor those lost. Bluegrass Airport also issued a statement saying the victims' families are finally getting some of the informed and impartial answers they deserve in a year when there has been as much speculation as fact presented publicly. The airport also thanked the NTSB and its board for their work. And Congressman Ben Chandler also commended the board for its work and said he hopes the NTSB recommendations will lead to real changes in aviation safety in our country. In other news tonight, he was acquitted of the most serious charge, complicity to murder. That's the word from a Bourbon County jury in the trial of Christopher Carter, who was convicted of evidence tampering and abuse to a corpse in the murder of 19-year-old Jennifer Toadvine. She was killed back in 2004, and Carter's then roommate, William Oliver, was convicted of her murder. LEX 18's Amanda Harrod joins us live from the courthouse in Paris with tonight's developments. Well, Kevin, the jury spent nearly seven hours inside the Bourbon County Courthouse just behind me on the second floor trying to make their decision. The prosecution says it's disappointed that Carter was found not guilty to complicity to murder. But on the other hand, Carter's mother says she's disappointed that her son wasn't acquitted on all the other charges. Now, after the jury came back with its verdict, the court moved quickly into the sentencing phase. That's when the defense asked the jury to go easy on Carter so that he could finally finish his GED and begin a structured life. On the other hand, you had the prosecution pleading with the jury to assign the maximum penalty five years for complicity to tamper with evidence and 12 months for complicity to abuse a corpse. In the end, the jury decided on the maximum penalty. The family says justice is served and they're pleased with that decision.
it has been a long time coming. Um, but I do believe that justice was served. And I appreciate all the work that went in from the attorneys and the jury. And um, justice has been served for Jennifer. And that's what it was all about. Now, we are told that Carter has already served 40% of his time that he has been allotted, which means he is already eligible for parole on these charges. We're carving the news live in Bourbon County from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom. Now back to you. Final sentencing is scheduled for September 11th. And now, Chief Meteorologist Bill Meck and LEX 18 Storm Tracker Weather. An afternoon where we saw strong and severe thunderstorms across the northeastern quarter of the area. Tonight has turned very calm, and with it, it's not bad outside. Max Track Live Dop, we've got one little thunderstorm over in West Virginia. That's in West Virginia, don't worry about it. As we check our storm trackers, it has been really a pretty good night out there. Uh, we zip on down to a 72 degree mark in Midway, 71 in Lawrenceburg, down in Danville, into Jones is 73. Madison County is pretty much 76, Richmond and in beautiful Berea. Look over in Beattyville, Michael Johnson, the sky is clear in 74 at 75 in Hazard, but some fog forming where we had almost a half inch of rain in Hillsboro earlier today. Tommy Lambert's down to 68 degrees at his place. The main reporting stations, though, all low to mid 70s. One of the warmer nights we've had this week. A little fog will be uh, forming as we go through the night tonight, especially areas that saw rain. Other than that, we'll be down to about 67. But tomorrow, more of us have a chance of getting in on those thunderstorms, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. We've had a nice run leading yeah. into them. Thank you, Bill. Also in the news this evening, LEX 18 has obtained surveillance video that shows just how lucky dozens of shoppers and employees were the day the wife of a former Kentucky gubernatorial candidate crashed her car into a busy Kroger store. Lee Searcy shows you the chaos that was caught on tape. Just a car shot out and hit my car. I, I really don't know what happened. That's Craig Allen to the right of your screen, loading his car the day Emily Gable's silver Mercedes slammed into his car, barely missing him, before plowing into this busy Kroger store. And I thought for sure somebody had to be hurt, somebody had to be run over. I mean, that car went through there like it had been shot out of a cannon. Look at all the people near the doorway and checkout lanes. They're here just seconds before the car careened through the store. Had it happened any sooner, this couple walking near the entrance would have been right in Gable's path. And watch the clerk to your left. He spots the car coming and runs for his life. Here's a different view from another camera. See this guy at the customer service counter? He hears the commotion and jumps on the counter to safety. Police say it's incredible no one was injured. Emily Gable admitted that she was legally drunk and in court this week told a judge she was thankful nobody got hurt. Looking at this video, police shoppers and near victims like Craig Allen would have to agree. Incredibly amazed that uh, nobody else was hurt. Covering the news in Frankfurt, Lee Searcy, LEX 18 News. This week, Emily Gable pled guilty to driving drunk. Her license is suspended for 60 days and she must get treatment for alcohol. A fallen Kentucky Marines. Former teachers say he volunteered for the mission that led to his death. Watch how he's being remembered coming up in a few minutes on LEX 18 News at 11. Also ahead, investigators give us an update in the case of a murdered Louisville four-year-old. And now, Chief Meteorologist Bill Meck and LEX 18 Storm Tracker Weather. Some folks had storms to deal with tonight. Most of us stayed dry. I don't think that'll be the case tomorrow. Let's go ahead and show you the Max Track Live Doppler now, which cleared out very nicely. We watched those thunderstorms roar across eastern Kentucky. Some hail, some wind damage reports. In fact, you look at them here, and mostly it was hail from these storms. We had uh, hail reports out of uh, Sharpsburg, northern part of Bath County. That's getting close to nickel-sized hail. Hey, one of the storms that developed early on, that's inch and a half. That's golf ball-sized hail up in the northwestern part of northwest of Sulphur, Kentucky, getting up there toward Henry County. So it gives you an idea of what was going on earlier. So the storm reports were there today. I expect to see more of them tomorrow. And on the Max Track 3D, what is really interesting to watch this. Look at the lightning coming down out of these storms. And then you can also see the, the orange boxes that show up. Those are the severe thunderstorm warnings associated with each of these storms. So you notice how the lightning really gets going on a lot of these and the warnings follow suit. 
and that is sometimes a case with the severe storms, although the lightning does not make the storm severe, but if a storm is producing hail, it's also likely producing a lot of lightning as well. New cluster of storms is developing up there across the Great Lakes, and it is coming this way. You can also see the last of the circulation, that big closed low we've been talking about all week long. Well, now it's gone. It's finally given up the ghost. That little bit of hail that we had today was kind of its parting shot. It's all being absorbed together now. You see that line of showers and storms there? That's cold front that gives us the risk for severe storms late tomorrow afternoon, especially tomorrow evening. Here's the setup. Again, that low pressure going away. Here comes the front by tomorrow morning. That front is working its way toward the Ohio Valley. Showers and storms will break out ahead of it. So by late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening, stay weather aware. We could have a pretty decent squall line come through. Now the bad part, Saturday. The front's going to slow down. I think it keeps a chance of showers and storms around for a better part of the day on Saturday. I think by late in the day, we'll start to clear things out, but it will take until late in the day before that happens. Most folks, low to mid 70s tonight, a couple exceptions at the top and bottom of your screen. Also, Louisville still at 80. It actually feels like summer out there tonight. 74 right now in Lexington after a high today of 86. And tomorrow, we'll add a degree or two to that. But then we change it over the weekend. For tonight, partly cloudy, patchy fog down to 67. Your day tomorrow, partly sunny with thunderstorms late in the day. Your high comes in at 87. You'll notice more humidity during the day tomorrow. Showers and storms will be slowly ending on Saturday. The chance is not zero on Sunday, but I think most of Sunday really does end up being fine. And we start heating things up, especially the first of next week, up around 90. Yeah, next week looks like the beginning of the dog days. Just in time for August. Yeah, thanks, Bill. We want to get you up to date now on the breaking news we told you about at the top of the newscast, that small plane crash in Pulaski County. We now know the name of the man who was killed in that plane crash. He is the pilot, 60-year-old Thomas Frank Kaiser of Rockwood, Tennessee. We'll have much more about that plane crash coming up on LAX 18 News at Sunrise. I want to update you about another breaking story we told you at the top of the newscast. That tractor trailer and car collision near the 102 mile marker in the southbound lanes of I-75. Here's what Lexington police have been telling us. I-75 South has one lane open at the moment. Uh, they're trying to clear some diesel fuel that the truck spilled after that collision. Two people are being treated for minor injuries and those lanes will be shut down for another 15 minutes or so, quite possibly longer. The Lexington High School athletic trainer charged with emailing a pornographic picture of himself to a student is still getting paid. Detectives say Gregory Jackson took the picture of his genitalia in front of the Dunbar High mascot in the school's athletic training room. Jackson was contracted through UK Sports Medicine to work at Dunbar. A UK spokesperson tells us Jackson has been suspended with pay pending the outcome of his case. Jackson is banned from being on any Fayette County school campus and has been ordered not to contact the 17-year-old girl. Investigators in Louisville say they're searching through 75 boxes of trash looking for clues in the murder of a four-year-old boy. Cesar Ivan Aguilero Cano's body was found wrapped in a trash bag in the back of a city garbage truck earlier this month. The boy disappeared from his family's apartment in late June. No one has been charged with the murder, but more than 125 people have been interviewed about it. Investigators say they've also watched footage from more than 400 security cameras in the area while they wait to learn the official cause of death. And the governor has ordered flags to have staff in honor of a Kentucky Marine who died in Iraq. 20-year-old Lance Corporal Robert Lynch died along with two fellow Marines during a combat mission Tuesday. He graduated from Seneca High School in 2005 where he was a member of the ROTC program. Sergeant Major Gary Wilson says his former student volunteered to go on the mission that led to his death. Robbie was small in stature, but big in heart. You know, you, 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 you turn around and there was Robbie. He was, he was there to help you. Sergeant Major Wilson says Lynch also dreamed of becoming an entertainer. He says it wasn't unusual for Lynch to come to class to share a poem or a song he'd written. Well, his teammates hit the field today, but NFL star Michael Vick was in court. Now he pled to federal dogfighting charges next on LAX 18 News. NFL star Michael Vick has pleaded not guilty to federal dogfighting charges. Vick entered his plea today in federal court in Richmond, Virginia, but had nothing to say on his way out. A federal magistrate ordered the conditional release of the Atlanta Falcons quarterback and three co-defendants. Vick is accused of conspiracy involving illegal dogfighting, procuring and training pit bulls for fighting, 
and planning fights across state lines. Well, it may be the third game on the schedule, but it's priority number one. Rich Brooks talks about Kentucky and Louisville, the Commonwealth's biggest rivalry, coming up next in LEX 18 Sports. It was a love fest at the annual Governor's Cup luncheon held in Louisville today. Rich Brooks and new Cardinal coach Steve Craigthorpe talking about their respect for each other and their nearly 30 year history together. But on September 15th, the love will probably subside for a few hours. Just ask true blue fans. The Kentucky Louisville game is the third one on the schedule this year, but both coaches contend no less important. Brooks is 0-4 against the Cards in his tenure at UK, and he says that's just not good enough. Rivalry that, that we really haven't done our part in in recent years, and uh, it's it's a huge uh, game uh, in this state. It it uh, takes on a uh, a major scope nationally this year, I believe, because of the uh, uh, the two quarterbacks that are playing. Uh, what's projected of them in the NFL draft and. Uh, uh, it's, it's just a huge, huge game. A long night over at Applebee's Park. The Legends take Lakewood 14 innings, but can't get it done. They lose 6-5. to five. Reds wrapping things up with the Brewers and Ken Griffey Jr. ripping things out of the park. A solo shot to inch him closer to 600. Do you see Ryan Lemon there in the crowd? Hmm. He was there. This home run career of number 588, but <laughs> this is the second time in the series the Reds have had to come back, and you know what they do. Adam Dunn comes home from second off a of Javi Valentin RBI walk off. That's the second time he's done that in the series. Reds win it in 10, 6 to 5. It's a good news, bad news day for the Bengals. A day before training camp opens, they get sacked. Linebacker Odell Thurman is out another year. He missed last season after violating the NFL substance abuse policy. To the good, Cincinnati signed its second round draft pick. Auburn running back Kenny Irons, first round cornerback Leon Hall is still unsigned. Finally, Wake Forest basketball coach Skip Prosser died this morning of an apparent heart attack shortly after jogging. Prosser spent the past seven seasons with the Demon Deacons. Before that, he spent seven years at Xavier in Cincinnati. He was just 56 years old. Prosser's wife, by the way, is from Louisville. A final check of your LEX 18 Storm Tracker forecast right after this. We'll be dodging thunderstorms by late tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. Some of those could be strong or severe. Thank you, Bill. And thanks for watching. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno is coming up next. Good night.